This is an instructional video on how to install an RJ45 connector onto Proplex cable. Now the first thing you need to remember to do is slide the boot onto the cable. Next, by turning in the direction of the large arrow, use the AmpNet Connect tool to cut about 1.5 inches of jacket. Leaving this length makes it easy to work with the wires. Next, remove the jacket. Now, use one hand to hold the shield while the other pulls the jacket back. Fold the braid onto the jacket to keep it from sliding back up. And notice a black line has been drawn on the table to show how far the jacket has been pulled back. A quarter to half an inch is sufficient. Next, use a pair of shears to nip the foil near the braid. This will allow you to tear the foil off. Next, do the same to remove the plastic containment wrap. Trim any plastic you may have missed. A third material to remove is a white containment wrap. You cannot tear it in a circular direction like the plastic and the foil, but you can tear it in an upward direction. In this case, one cut is made and torn off. A second cut is made and torn off. And finally, a large piece can be cut all at once. Trim any little bits and pieces that you may have missed. Now, fold the wires back to expose the Kevlar. Now, the Kevlar reinforcement strands will need to be removed. However, cutting them with a regular pair of shears is a bit difficult. Using a pair of shears that is designed to cut Kevlar makes the job a bit easier. Now, fold the wires forward. Fold the braid forward about a quarter to half an inch. And next, stretch the jacket back up into the braid, using one hand to hold the jacket and the other hand to stretch the jacket. And 
once the stretching of the jacket is complete, reorganize the braid. Now, the purpose of stretching the jacket back up is to create a quarter to half inch portion of the jacket that does not have any Kevlar foil and containment wrap underneath. This will make it easier to insert the jacket into the RJ45 connector later on. Now, in this demonstration, I'm using the wiring standard T568B to make a straight through patch cable. This wiring standard designates the color code. Place each wire into a load bar one at a time and note the open end of the load bar faces you and the white wire paired with the solid orange wire is in the leftmost position of the load bar while the orange wire is placed in position number two. Next, untwist the green pair and place the white wire next to the orange wire in position number three. Now untwist the blue pair and place the solid blue wire in position number four. Now place the white wire that was paired with the solid blue wire in position number 5. And now place the green wire that was left behind in position number 6. Next untwist the brown pair. and place the white wire in position number seven. And finally, place the solid brown wire in position number eight. Position the load bar so that its legs stand on top of the braid and the jacket. Now take a second load bar and cut the legs off. Both load bars are temporary and are only used for measuring purposes and a guide for cutting. Now slide the first load bar up towards the tips of the wires. Use it as a guide to make a nice flush cut. This makes it easier to slide the modified load bar onto all the wires. Position the load bars so that the legs of the first load bar is standing on the braid and the jacket and the second load bar is sitting on the first load bar. And once the load bars are in position, take a look at the base of the first load bar and ensure that there are no more than two wires that overlap each other. And once you're happy with the position of the load bars, use them as a guide for your cut. And now, in order to install the cable into the connector, 
Remove both of the load bars. Before removing the second load bar, pinch the end of the jacket. This will help keep the wires in position. Now, gently insert the wires inside the connector. Ensure that they are going into their proper slots. And in order to get the jacket inside the connector, you will have to insert the left side, then the right side, the left and then right, constantly playing and adjusting until you get the full shield and jacket inside the connector. Once you feel that the wires are fully inserted, ensure that you can see the copper tips of all the wires at the top of the connector. Now, if you were unable to insert enough jacket into the connector in order to fill the crimp window, you can stretch more jacket towards the connector and then work more jacket inside to fill the window. And now, there is enough jacket in the window to make a reliable crimp. Double check you can see your copper tips. And make your crimp. After crimping, ensure that all the teeth have been crimped down and ensure that you can see all your copper tips. And now you can remove the excess braid. It's not important to be extremely neat because the boot is going to cover it, but remove most of the bulk. Now, slide the boot up onto the connector. Now it is time to test the cable using the Fluke net tool. And what we are hoping to see here is nine connections for a straight through cable, eight connections for our four pairs of wires, and one connection for the shield. 